What's up guys, this is Ashox, it's time for the showcase of Yuha. She was just released, I have 15 skill ups on her and I'll try her out in different team compositions. But fair warning to you guys, there is a way to use Yoha properly and there is the wrong way of using Yoha and I'll be showcasing the right way versus the wrong way and you can see major, major differences, right? So I have her with attack percentage for uh, the team activated, but then I switch it off to health percentage for herself. I want more health, I want more bulk on her and I'm using her own artifact and I also use Elbrus Ritual Sword uh, throughout the video. And you will see how thick the barrier is from her artifact. The way I have her built, as much health as possible, guys. You want some defense together, it will make up for a higher effective health. So you can survive longer in the battle. Very good. Now, of course, you want some speed. You want some effectiveness. Maybe some effect resistance later on in game build. You don't need crit chance and crit damage because her skill 3 cannot crit i mean you could build it but you're gonna lose a lot of value because it's just gonna work for the, for the skill number one and i don't recommend it right you definitely want to pump that health up now yulha she can take a massive beating that like that's good that is definitely good because uh she's got reflect damage if the enemy attacks her with a single target attack she reflects 30 percent of the damage back now it doesn't look like the reflect damage is uh, the reflection part doesn't seem to be a survivability increase it's not like she takes 70 percent of the damage and the reflect of 30 percent is just reflected back it seems like she's taking a hundred percent of the damage and 30 percent of that is reflected as back so you can see it here you can see it so it is a bit over 20,000 damage that we took with the orius rhetoric and huayang had a barrier it looks to be like she took 6,000 damage right so you know, 30% of 20,000 is 6,000 damage. It just works. That, like, that, what it looks like. And to be honest, if Reflect actually was a survivability increase, I'm pretty sure they would have stated so in the game because that would be completely broken. Could you imagine, like, Reflect, if it actually reflected the portion back to the enemy and you didn't take it, and then you stack the layers of protection, you have Aureus, you know, you have, like, Adam and Shield, you have, I mean... Uh, proof of Valor, you have, uh, you know, defense buff, you have healing on top of that, you got barrier, like, it would be insane if it worked that way. Now, you will see, this battle, it's working well for me, right, but Hua Yong doesn't have attack buff, and Hua Yong can deal some insane amount of damage, you guys know about that, and it's really ridiculous type of numbers she can dish out, so to survive that, yeah, you, you need to have a team helping her. Uh, and you need to have a lot of health on her, right? And, uh, okay, now her skill 1 is very cool because Resurrected Provoke helps you survive for your team because if you're forcing the enemy to attack the hero that has the highest maximum health on your team, that's very good. That's very good because the skill number 2 or, or the skill number 3 of the enemy is way more impactful than skill 1 usually, right? So that's good. Also, skill 1s usually are single target attacks, so if... Uh, Yoha is the one that keeps on getting attacked from Redricted Provoke targets. That means reflect damage back to them. Uh, you know, it's not dangerous because they're just using their skill one. So that's cool. That's definitely cool. You could open up with Fairytale Tenebria, you know, on your team and then the enemy uh, attack Yoha. That could be like a really good start. And then her health drops down, activates her passive. And then the lower her health is at, the more damage she deals with the skill number three. So in the first battle, she dealt some like over 16,000 damage and her health could have been lower. Uh, I mean, what was it actually? It was a it was a bit over 10,000 health remaining. So imagine if she was even lower, right? Um, imagine if I had a damage increase artifact on her, her own artifact, maybe like Portrait of the Saviors, uh, Unity Guild War artifact. Now, I'm using her own artifact in this battle, and the barrier is very small, guys. The barrier, I mean, it looks to be maybe like 10% of her maximum health. I don't feel like that's worth it. So, Elbrus Ritual Sword is way more impactful throughout the battle. All these resurrected provoke happening is just so powerful, guys. I think that is the way. Or you could build her, you know, on um, Proof of Valor. Like, huge survivability increase. You could survive, like, Huayang. Big single target damage if... If... Um... You don't have Aureus, maybe. Maybe look at this here. Look at the damage that she took. 
I don't have an Orius. Over 32,000 damage. Huayang has attack buff, guys. You have to be careful. Like, it's hard to have 30, over 32,000 health. So that means you need Orius on your team. You need to survive better than this. Like, you need a Proof of Valor. Uh, Orius, uh, Barrier, like, Huayang will just decimate you with attack buff. So be very careful. And they've shown uh, Huayang attacking her in the preview video, right? I don't know how she did so little damage. It didn't make much sense, right? There was not even an Orius. But yeah, uh, keep that in mind. It, it's very important that you use her properly. Uh, even fighting a team that maybe attacks uh, your whole team multiple times, that's good. If they're bringing her health down, that is good because you want to actually have that to happen. Look at the damage. The damage is not even 2,000, right? Not even 2,000 when her health is like popped off, it's max. So you need to actually lose health or your damage is terrible with the skill number three. So if they just ignore her, they have a bunch of single target attacker and they deal with the rest of your team and then deal with her last, yeah, she's she might not be so impactful, right? But if they have a bunch of heroes that attack your whole team or maybe you are able to apply Redirected Provoke or force the Redirected Provoke with like Fairy Tail Tenera or something like that, well, like they'll, they'll reduce her health, right? Um, and you could avoid healing her and keep your, the rest of your team alive and make her drop her health lower so you can actually deal more damage. But the skill 3 is very powerful, right? Because it penetrates defense, and if you don't have to crit, uh, because it won't crit, right? That's great. It, it ignores damage sharing, very powerful. You don't have to worry about, like, those Aureus. Also, also, if you miss your attack, it doesn't matter. You're going to be dealing the full amount of damage. It's a normal hit, right? And uh, that, that also means that, uh, I mean, you could attack a fire hero as well. So that's good. Like, you don't have to worry about that, which uh, I definitely like. Now, this hero is not going to be a hero that you can bring in every type of battle, of course, right? Like, you have to justify pulling for her. Uh, do you have the gear? Do you feel like she plays well, uh, like, with the rest of your roster? You need to have maybe uh, a team that is slower turn two team or like really bulky multiple layers of protection you no know, Orius adamant shield defense buff uh, barrier maybe some healing stuff like that to keep your team alive longer to survive the turn one to uh, retaliate on turn number two uh, so it's uh it's not for everyone right this hero um but she seems to be uh doing pretty well when you use her properly now i'm Sort of like forcefully bringing her versus Huayang because I know the AI is fire. I know she'll be attacking her because she's the only Earth hero on my team. So what that means is that you can use her in control environment. Arena offense, Guild War offense, that would work much better than when you're actually fighting a player in World Arena because they avoid her initially. She's full health. You know, like you saw the damage, like she, she does nothing, right? Her health needs to be dropped down. But when it does, when it's low, um, she's able to deal some pretty decent damage. Keep in mind, she's using Elbrus Ritual Sword. So there's no damage increase there. So there's various builds that you can have her on. Uh, Portrait, Guild War Unity Artifact, like an artifact that boosts her damage would just uh, help to uh, have some bigger number, increase her chance to one shot, get the health recovery which seems to be about 40% uh, of her maximum health so the more health you have on her the more recovery you'll get out of it so that's very good if you have 30,000 health on her that is beautiful that is uh, 12,000 health uh, back 12,000 healing right and she also has the barrier from the passive clears all debuff you know that's the thing but there's a window of opportunity that that's the thing too that's the weakness when I did the first video my thoughts about this hero is that if uh, the enemy doesn't bring her to trigger the passive, then that is like it's it means like you're not gonna get cleared out of debuff. That means you're not getting that that sweet barrier that's like 30% of her maximum health. So that is uh, unfortunate, and you're not gonna get the combatness push that goes from 20 to 25% after skill up. So all these things, I mean, she could cut. She lost quite a bit of health. Skill three deals a lot of damage. Maybe you have 20 soul soul burn. No skill three and two, uh, you pop someone, and the skill one, you resurrected provoke uh, someone else, dealt some damage to them. That's pretty strong. Maybe the skill three didn't down them. Maybe the skill three and two, the skill one takes out 
the, that target, at least you really want to make sure that you down uh, someone when you pull off the skill 3, especially skill 3 into the skill number 1. It needs to happen or it sort of like defeats the purpose of having this hero. So it's very important that you actually, uh, you know, put her uh, to good use, uh, use her kit properly. But yeah, she needs to survive the big damage coming her way. She just needs to. And Hua Yang with attack buff is very deadly. Like, if you don't have enough health, like under 30,000, uh, and even if you have an Aureus, like a Hua Yang can pop her. Like that, That's something you have to keep in mind, guys. So... You know, like uh, boosting her survivability, boosting that health, uh, having like a, a proof of valor, even like just so she can like survive a big damage. And to be honest, like if you boost her survivability a lot, what that means is that like maybe they're throwing so much at you, world arena, whatever, they're trying to take her down. And then they realize that, oh, I can't actually take her down so easy. So that means like now she's in a good position, low health. The, the, maybe the passive triggered, she cuts now, he, she jumped with her uh, combationist push, and then it's her time to shine skill 3, maybe soul burn skill 3 into skill 1, took out someone, resurrected to provoke someone else, dealt some damage, that's good, that's very good, now she was definitely useful, if you use her that way. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely gonna be different builds, counter immunity, uh, speed immunity, you can have her on lifesteal immunity, I mean, to maybe surprise the enemy with her sustain, you know, healing more, that means like with like even like Elbrus, that's gonna be fine. That's gonna be pretty good. And uh, I think this hero is definitely good in the right situation, but you definitely need to, uh, you know, bring her against the right teams. Uh, so that's the thing. Even if the enemy attacks your whole team, at least it's shipping at her health. That means that she's getting uh, softer, she's getting lowered in health, and she's dealing, she's gonna deal some damage with the skill number three. You can see throughout the battles, Sometimes I use the skill 3, you know, she's uh, on the lower side in terms of health. Uh, sometimes she's like halfway uh, with her health pool, like maybe around 15,000 health. And the damage, you know, it's not amazing. That's the thing. It, it, like, it's okay. Uh, so yeah, like imagine if the enemy has, you know, multiple layers of protection. Uh, that's something that you have to worry about too. Like, uh, it, it's going to be rough to just pop someone straight off the bat because uh, I'm not seeing the numbers. Uh, really like and it's not gonna be reliable because there's that condition of having less health to actually deal the massive damage let's say potentially but like if they ignore her that's gonna be rough to pull off and a lot of stuff is happening on turn one turn two in the battle and uh, if she can't shine she can't do her thing uh, then that's that's gonna be pretty sad it will be now <clears throat> what else is there about this hero there's the the reflect the reflect really like it, it helps throughout the battle, right? It adds up. It's it's good, you know. It's good to have, uh, but uh, to be honest, like it doesn't justify bringing the hero just because of the reflect. Uh, that's just not enough. But in a control environment, if you know a uh, certain hero or heroes will be attacking her, and you have her maybe on a build that's like super tanky, the team's helping her to stay alive and stuff like that. Yeah, over time, you're just gonna be dealing damage from the reflect. So that's good on top of uh, everything else that she does. Uh, the skill three, really like ignoring them and sharing is, it, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal to actually be able to take out someone, right? So that's good. But uh, you know, the skill three, when it's on cooldown, you're just gonna be using skill ones often. And sometimes if her health didn't drop more uh, enough, then you're just gonna be using skill ones here and there. And then the skill ones, uh, you know, the damage is not gonna be so big, right? Cause you don't have her built with crit crit damage. But it's going to be about those redirected to provoke. Maybe you want to have more effectiveness than I have her at. I think it's like 68% that I have her at. So that's okay to like just uh, land my debuff on heroes that you know, don't have effect resistance. Not like support heroes, like damage dealing heroes and stuff like that. It's going to be fine. Uh, but of course, you know, like she's not going to be able to do it reliably against fire heroes. So of course, you're going to like want to last pick her, uh, you know, in, in World Arena. I think like she can stay alive much longer, uh, potentially if uh, she's like on life still Albrus, really tanky, and uh, if the enemy, like if the enemy is running a damage uh, team, high offense, maybe like they have to take out all your heroes, right? And uh, if they land like the fans break and her her passive clears all debuff from her, or you have a hero 
like Dishonor a little bit, like a hero that can remove all debuff from your team, that, that's definitely gonna hurt them uh, real bad because uh, they sometimes teams rely heavily on defense break and if it's not sticking on you, then uh, you're just gonna be able to uh, survive a lot of stuff they're gonna be throwing at you and then it's gonna be your time to go and then you're gonna be able to take them out one by one. But let us know what you guys think about her in the comment section. Let us know uh, where you had, uh, you know, like success with the hero or uh, where she's weak in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely an interesting hero that uh, I'll uh, try in other areas of the game. But that's it for this one. I'm Ashanas. Good luck with all you do. It's out for now.